Hi, I'm Beth. And when Todd and I were living as missionaries in Monterey, we would go every couple months up to the border to buy what we called border goodies, the kinds of foods that we couldn't get in Mexico we thought were really important for our family to operate. And it was on one of those days when we had gone up to Texas, I found myself shopping at a Texas outlet and I was just window shopping really. And I saw this purse in the window that I thought was really cute. It was purple and suede and really small. And at those days I was carrying these large backpack army bag looking things that had the contingency plan for any one of the nine children I was raising at the time. And so the, the contrast just kind of drew me in. And the next time I walked by the window, I was like, I wonder what that costs. And the third time I w walked by that window, I thought, I wonder what that feels like. And then eventually I, I walked out of that store with that purse that was out of my missionary budget at the time. I walked out with that purse under on my arm and I carried it around for a few weeks in the communities where I was serving and I had this little purple scarf on it and it was, it was pretty cute. But eventually it got stolen out of my car and I can remember when it got stolen, I thought to myself, just to give you insight into my broken theology, I was thinking to myself like I deserved this and I, I wasn't a good steward. And to further punish myself, I didn't replace it. Instead, I started to carry the purse of my eight-year-old daughter. But then I realized as a few weeks after that, I was traveling to the U.S. to speak somewhere that I looked kind of silly adult woman in a little girl purse. So in route between the airport and the church, I stopped at a strip mall to replace it. And the only store in that strip mall that looked like they might sell me a purse was a luggage store. So I buzzed in this luggage store and I saw this leather backpack that was hanging on the wall. And I was thinking to myself, okay, that's like still kind of practical, but really cute. And I grabbed it and went up to the front of the store to buy it. And the lady told me how much it cost. And it was the same amount as that suede purple purse I had just had stolen. And I said to her, no, thank you. I'm not buying that. I've already learned that lesson before. I'm not, no, thank you. And I left and I went on to the, my speaking engagement. Then later that night, I drove to my mom's house in Cincinnati where I was gonna spend the night before returning to Mexico the next day. My mom's house was our US mailing address. And so I had some mail sitting in my childhood bedroom waiting for me to open, including a package for my college roommate for a birthday that I had had the month before. And as I was opening up that package, <laughs> the first thing I thought of when I saw what was inside, I said out loud actually to the Lord, you are always reintroducing yourself to me because I thought for sure you did not care about purses. Inside that package was the leather backpack I had held in my hands just a couple hours beforehand. And I called my roommate to thank her for her gift, her generous gift, and I learned on that phone call that she had actually purchased that backpack before my other one had even gotten stolen, which means the Lord had put into motion a solution to a problem I hadn't even had yet. That night when I laid in bed and I was just thinking about the whole thing, I was thinking to myself, Lord, like, I wasted a lot of emotional energy being mad at the thief and being mad at myself and beating myself up. And like here you were already having in motion this solution to this problem. Like what else am I upset about? What else am I worried about and tied up in knots about and wasting emotional energy on that I can trust you instead to already be at work in a solution for? And I didn't even know how to pray like that. So I just kept saying the same word over and over again. I just kept saying amen which literally means so be it. I just kept saying amen. Like I, and it meant to me things like I trust you and you're sovereign and, and you've got this. And then finally my heart settled down and I did all what we normally do in prayer, right? I like confess my sins and ask for stuff. And, and then I finished my prayer time by acknowledging who I was talking to. And I was just like, oh dear Jesus. And I realized I had inverted my prayers. I had started with amen and I had ended with dear Jesus. That's been over 13 years ago. And that's how I pray today. I pray all the time and I start with amen, which means I trust you, you're sovereign. You heal her body, you sell the house, you take care of this, you got that. I'm not gonna hold it in my hands anymore. I'm not strong enough. I, 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 I'm, not, I, I'm not enough. God's been demonstrating his strength from Genesis to Revelation. When we open up our Bible, it is clear that God is more than strong enough for whatever it is we have in our hands. One of my stories that I love in the book of Exodus about God's strength comes during that, let my people go, Pharaoh and Moses showdown. And Pharaoh during those times, in order to demonstrate his strength, would raise his arm in some kind of art depiction and hanging from his hand would be the hair of an untold amount of Israelite slaves. The raising of your arm was a demonstration of strength in that time, maybe kind of like the way we might do it like this today. He would raise his right arm and there's lots of art that depicts him with his arm raised and holding the hair of the slaves. So it's not lost on me that when finally the Lord has said it is enough and he tells Moses, take my people and take them to freedom. He leads them down to the edge of the Red Sea and he tells Moses, 
raise your arm. And as Moses raises his arm and that ocean parts, it's as if the Lord is saying, you wanna see what an arm can do? You wanna see what kind of strength comes in an arm? I'm gonna split an ocean. And throughout scripture, you'll see what his arm can do. It can reach the, it says, we can never be outside of the reach of his arm, that he will redeem us with his arm. But probably my favorite arm passage comes out of the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, where it starts, he who, who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a tender shoot. Nothing in his appearance would desire us, despised and rejected a man of suffering, took up our pain, bore our suffering. He pierced for our transgressions. Of course, they're talking about Jesus. He is the strength. He, this is what the arm of the Lord can do. It can overcome all sin, all death. It can redeem all people, not just the Israelites in the time of Moses, but all people. It says, it says the, uh, the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. So when we think about the things that we have in our hands, the storylines that are hard for us to even pray about, we can trust in a Lord who is strong enough and that can bear all of it in his arms and has used his strength to redeem us all.